up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out some of the new features contained inside of the newest version of Sanctus Library. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, remember that through October 30th, Sanctus Library is on sale. So if you'd want to check that out, you can do that now and save a little bit of money um, in order to get it. So there is a full and a light version in here. I will link to this add on in the notes down below. But one of the cool things about Sanctus Library is he is probably the most consistent of anyone I've seen of doing free monthly updates with new materials. If you buy this once, you get the new stuff that he creates in the future. And not only is he adding new materials, and upgrading the materials that he had in there, he's also adding other things like assets and tools as well. So he's got some really cool stuff like lava, ropes and cables, and then a couple different geometry node tools, which we're going to talk about. So let's go ahead and let's jump over into Blender. All right, so first off, we've got the upgraded Smart Metal. So the Smart Metal version 2, which you can find in the Metal section down below under Smart Metal version 2, um, down here. These are going to be faster and they also work better than the smart metals we had in here previously. So um, he simplified the shader trees on these a little bit. And so if I jump over into the shader editor to take a look at this, we've got all these different options that we can adjust, like the roughness and bump of the paint. So if I make the paint less rough, for example, notice how it's going to get more reflective. Um, I can make it bumpier or less bumpy using the bump down here. I can also add things like the edge wear and adjust the size of the edge wear in here, as well as adjusting the number of scratches and the seed of the scratches. So um, if I want to adjust like the scale of these scratches, for example, notice how those are adjusting inside of the scene. So you can drag that to the left or to the right. Notice how if I drag it to the left, those get a lot bigger. If I drag it to the right, they get a lot smaller. You can also adjust the seed of those in here to adjust the random location. So the Smart Metal has definitely been upgraded and is a really cool tool. All right, so we've also got a few other new materials in here. So you've got like dirt, you've got lava. Some of these are still uh, marked as experimental, but they are pretty cool. The lava has like emissive coming off of the material so that it actually glows. Um, and then these concrete plates could be really helpful for architectural style modeling, that kind of thing. Again, uh, fully procedural materials, so you can adjust everything that's in them. So the pumpkin material is definitely fun and allows you to generate a procedural pumpkin. So that one's more fun to play around with. It's probably good for Halloween and nothing else, but it's still kind of a good time. All right, so the wires, ropes, and cables are really cool. You can apply these to a beveled curve so that they update live when you make a change to a curve. I would show you this live, by the way, but for some reason my video recorder keeps crashing um, inside of Blender. So here's a couple images of stuff I was able to create without doing a whole lot of work or anything like that. It was really easy to create. It's just that whenever I update something with cycles running, my video recorder keeps crashing on my computer. Okay, and so what I'm really excited about and interested in in this release is he started adding not only materials, but also geometry nodes assets that you can adjust. And so, I mean, obviously these are pretty uh, preliminary right now, but he's got like the geometry nodes cupcakes. You can add that cupcake in. And then if you look at this, right, if you come in here and you click on it and you adjust things like the settings, you can adjust the radius and size of the cupcake, as well as everything else as well, right? High to the dough, up above, other things like that. So it's a fully adjustable, procedurally generated cupcake, which is probably pretty specific and you're not necessarily going to need a cupcake anytime soon, but um, it's an idea of what could be coming in the future. So another thing that's actually fairly helpful is the sofa furniture. So I'm going to add that asset, bring it over here. So the sofa, you can adjust things like the width, you can adjust the depth, other things like this. This really shows what I think geometry nodes could do for what I'm really interested in, which is more like architectural style modeling, that kind of thing, um, because it gives you the ability to create this piece of furniture that's like 100% adjustable, right? So you can turn the back on and off, you can adjust the depth of the back, that kind of thing. I'm excited to see more things like this in the future. Um, I love geometry node setups like this one because they're just like fully editable and they give you all this control. You can also adjust things like the color of the sofa, other things like that. And it's got this kind of like textured material applied to it as well. So in addition to the furniture, he's also added this chains asset. And so that chain asset, is a curve asset that you bring in that's adjustable with a number of segments, other things like that. So that chain asset is an asset that you can bring in and it's actually brought in as a curve, meaning if I was to come in here and select this right here, the chain would adjust along with it. 
So let's say I was to go into top down view for a second and I was to extrude out new pieces right here. Notice how this chain is going to follow along with that and that's built on geometry nodes as well, um, meaning that I'm going to be able to adjust things like the scale of the chain links, other things like that. So you could definitely manually build this previously, but since this is built on geometry nodes, the adjustability is better. And in my opinion, it's just kind of a better tool. All right, and then finally, not only is he adding assets, he's also started adding tools. So for example, we've got the option to add array paths or circular arrays. So for the circular array, what you would do is you could take this object, right? And then we would select what we want to apply to it. And we would click on apply asset to object. And I'm going to go in and click on re-import asset. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a geometry node setup where this object gets placed as an array. So you can use this to create a circular array that's fully adjustable, which I really like because I find creating those circular arrays to be a little bit uh, a little bit annoying when you have to build them yourselves. So just being able to click something and create that array, I think is really helpful. And so he noted in his video, and this makes a ton of sense, you can turn snapping on and do a face project and do an align rotation to target. What you can do is you can set this up so that it's gonna align to any of the faces in your model. All right, and so you can also create an array path. So let's say I was to add a curve object. So we're going to go into curve, Bezier, like this. Let's tab into edit mode. I'll delete these. So we'll just jump into top down mode and just draw a simple curve like this one right here. And so let's say that I wanted to take my Bonnie model and create an array along the curve. What we would do is we would just select the object and click on apply asset to object. Now, all that does is makes the Bonnie model disappear, right? Well, what we need to do is we need to go into the geometry node settings right here and give it the path to follow. So in this case, right, we just wanna select this curve right here. And what that does is that automatically sets this up so this object follows along the curve. And you can set like number of objects in here, you can set the scale of those objects, you can randomize the spacing if you decide that you wanna do that. And you can also adjust things like rotation of the objects if you decide that you wanna do that. So instead of having to do all the modifier setup yourself, this just has a built-in tool that allows you to quickly create those objects along paths in Blender. So I'm just impressed with the way that Sanctus is consistently updating this add-on with new stuff, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Are you interested? As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.